Hey everybody, my name is Ian Westerman. I'm the head pro at EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this episode of Ask Ian, where today we're gonna to be answering a question from Trevor, who wrote to me and said, can you please make an Ask Ian episode of using a softer and more control-oriented racket? And if it helps form a more smooth swing and develop better tennis strokes and techniques. And he says, I've been using a stiffer racket for two or three years, and I went to the court the other day, I saw a guy who played really smooth and relaxed in each of his strokes, and he's just very, very solid in general, and his follow through is all the way to the end, which is beautiful. He told me that a softer racket makes you have, makes you use full potential of the swing and helps you develop a very solid and smooth stroke and feel the ball better. Okay, so he's, he's wanting to know if you use a, a softer racket, a more flexible racket, does that lead automatically to smoother, more relaxed, more flowing technique? Well, Trevor, first of all, I totally agree with you. That kind of swing technique is beautiful, and it's what I strive for myself to achieve, and it's what I strive for all of my students to achieve, especially on ground strokes and especially on the serve. Fluidity is essential to having just using the body efficiently and biomechanically correctly. It doesn't automatically mean that all your, your uh, movements are necessarily correct, but it helps immensely move the racket smoothly and efficiently and be able to hit good shots without having to work super hard. Now, I think your, your friend or the person that you talk to is on the right track about how stiffness and smoothness can be connected, but I think it's actually more than what he just talked about. And there's a couple of different factors at play here. Yes, stiffness is part of it. The overall weight of the racket is also a big part of it. Where the weight in the racket is, um, James, can you throw me a racket real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Where the weight in the racket is, is important, and the size of the racket is also important. If most of the weight in the racket is up towards the, the head of the racket, then it makes the handle very easy to, to maneuver. It makes the head very easy to maneuver back and forth. So when you see a really big racket that's really, really light, almost always the majority of the weight is in the head. And you can test that by putting your hand right at the bottom of the, the hoop or the head of the racket and just let go and see which direction the racket goes. So this racket has more weight in the handle, which means that it's, generally speaking, a heavier racket. And also, generally speaking, the racket head will be a little bit smaller. And all of those things go together. So the bigger the head is, the lighter the racket will be, the more of the, rack, the more of the weight will be towards the head, and also, usually, the stiffer the racket is. So all these things go together to make a big, light racket very easy to use poor technique. So from that perspective, your friend or acquaintance is absolutely correct. The lighter and bigger it is, and the more the, the weight is in the head, the easier it is to just kind of move the racket around with short, choppy swing technique, the easier it is to use crappy technique and still make a shot. And that's not what we want. So for my students, I'm always kind of nudging them a little bit. When they're ready to move to a new racket, I'm always nudging them towards a little bit smaller, a little bit heavier. And it could be a little bit more flexible. That's one of the variables, but it's not the biggest one. In my opinion, the, the size, the weight, and the balance supersede the flexibility part of it. But usually the flexibility is in line with those other factors. So the smaller, heavier, more handle heavy your racket is, the longer your, your swing has to be to generate racket head speed. And that length of swing and that smoothness is something that you absolutely should be trying to develop. So is there a direct correlation? Sometimes, but those other factors are really important too. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this explanation was, uh, was a little bit helpful to you. If you're looking for a little bit more guidance on how to develop those long, smooth, accurate, consistent strokes, there's a link in the description down below that leads to some coaching that'll just cost you a dollar. It'll show you step-by-step -step how to hit the most accurate and consistent ground strokes of your life. So check that out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like. Leave any comments or questions down below and let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover on a future episode of Ask Ian. Thanks for watching, take care, and good luck with your tennis. For hundreds of free digital tennis lessons, head over to EssentialTennis.com right now. 
More wins and more fun on the court is right around the corner. You'll even get a free gift just for stopping by. Simply click the link at the top of any page.